Donald Leggett, and I'm Head of Investor Relations at London South East. I'm joined today by Mark Thomas, Head of Investment Companies at Harman & Co. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me, Donald. It's a pleasure. So let's start by asking you to, to talk through your role. What sectors do you research and write notes for? Yeah, I'm Head of the Investment Companies at Harman & Co, and I have specific responsibility for debt investment companies and for private equity. Interesting. So today we're basing a conversation around three private equity clients you work with, and those are Oakley Capital Investments, ICG and Enterprise Trust, and Pantheon International. And the message here is that PE investment firms like these can be resilient in a downturn and return superior growth to quoted companies. So why do you think that is? Great. There are two fundamental questions there. One is about the superior growth. And that's really about having a business model that adds value. It's not the old PE that we all know from the past of asset stripping and buying companies cheaply and then just selling them all off. It's all about getting the business better, improving it operationally, adding skills like treasury and expertise. And all of that is really over a long term perspective. So you get really good corporate governance from private equity. When we look at it from a downturn perspective, it's that long term focus is actually really helpful. If you're investing for seven to 10 years, you really have to look through to the next cycle to get investments which will be defensive, to have sectors which are defensive, like technology and healthcare. And on all three companies you mentioned, they're very strong in those sectors. Yeah, and actually looking at the downside before you make the investment decision, not just hoping what the future will be. So it's all about the business model. And if you could give us a thumbnail sketch of the three different uh, PE companies that we're talking about today. Yeah, right. What we have with Pantheon is a, gives, it gives investors access to the entire global private equity market. Yeah, it is a fund of funds. It invests in all the asset classes. So it does primary investments, it does secondary investments, it does co-investments. You get the whole private equity market globally. With ICGT, what you have is a company which is focused and driven by this defensive growth. Um, it again is um, a, a global business, but fortunately wise, it's slightly more UK weighted, but certainly it is a global business and most recently it's been growing its US side. Again, it's a fund of fund. With Oakley Capital, you have a direct investor. So it's investing in the businesses directly. It's got three sectors, consumer, where it's tech enabled primarily, technology and education. And even in education, it's got tech enabled education businesses. So they're slightly different businesses. I mean, we wrote 60 pages on each of them. So there's quite a lot in our reports, but the short version is two fund of funds and one direct investor. So what I was interested to see was that despite carefully diversifying my investments in the March downturn, uh, they all went down by roughly 25 or 30 percent. It was horrible. And only some came back and subsequently outperformed, which was very gratifying, but only some of them. And some of them remain dogs. Um, how have your PE companies performed through the downturn? Yeah, if we look at the, the three of them, we've got Oakley's Capital, whose share price today is exactly the same as it was in the middle of February. With ICGT uh, or ICG Enterprise Trust and Pantheon, the share price is down about 5%. And you can compare that to, say, the FTSE All Share, which is down about 10%. So they have outperformed in terms of share prices. What's much more important, though, is actually looking at the real business, looking at what's happened to the net asset value of those businesses, taking out the noise that you get around sentiment. And what we've seen there, for example, is Oakley Capital's net asset value has risen. Pantheons has risen, ICGT has risen. Yeah, the businesses are actually performing even better than the share prices. But those net asset values are still, some of them are still a bit off um, what you might expect, so. Yeah, I mean, normally you'd, you'd expect these businesses to deliver north of 10% a year. If you look at Pantheon, for example, it's been going since 1987. 
Yeah, and it's delivered double digit returns on average since that time. So you're looking at a very good long term performance. Yeah, you will always get certain time periods where you know, the share price or the net asset value doesn't quite move in line. It's not a straight line, um, but fundamentally what you have is a long term investment delivering long term returns that beat the market on average. So what, how would you characterise the March downturn? Was that a one, one in 10 years event type thing? Uh, well, I mean, the last time you had that type of downturn was in 2008. Mm. Um, if you look at Pantheon, you can actually, obviously, it's going since 1987. You can look at the 1992 recession. You can look at the 2000.com and you've got the GFC. Yeah, in all of those cases, yeah, the, yeah, the downturn in the net asset value was significantly less than the market. Uh, and yeah, if we look at the early 90s recession, yeah, you've actually got um, yeah, net asset growth. So the model is there. Yeah, I'm not going to do something, not going to look at a long-term investment on a, on a one-month one view. Um, uh, fair point. It is worth bearing in mind as well that sentiment to, the, to private equity. So you've got the, the business, the net asset value. The share price does also reflect sentiment. And historically, I think a lot of people view private equity as being really highly geared. So if you have a downturn, it's going to be very sensitive to the downturn. The reality, and I can go into this in more detail if you want, the reality is that gearing is actually very, very manageable. And it's nothing like what you'd have seen in the past. So there's a go. Well, let's explore the, the, the gearing point. You would, you would assume that a, a high level of gearing isn't defensive. And I popped onto my Hargreaves Lansdowne account last night and checked out, the, checked out the gearing, checked out the NEVs for all these different companies. And, and you instantly said to me, oh, 100% geared. They're not 100% geared. So uh, Hargreaves Lansdowne fibbed. But I don't think they fibbed intentionally. But this is sometimes what happens to private investors because we don't get as much information as you analysts. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, on that website, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they don't tell you which companies uh, they they actually invested. Whereas you have all that information, and 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 we can read so much more into it. Anyway, gearing. Explain to us about gearing. Uh, um, I mean, there are sort of three levels of gearing to look at. The first is how geared are the companies which are being invested in. Yeah, because there's this perception that, yeah, private equity goes in and all it does is, yeah, gear up with lots of debt and that's how it makes it returns. That's absolute and total rubbish in terms of where we are today. If you look at gearing measured against uh, the, the, the EBITDA, so, yeah, debt to EBITDA, yeah, in the main, you're looking about four to five times in most of the investee companies. That hasn't risen in the past two or three years, which is very different from where we were in the last cycle. If you look at debt to equity, there's nearly twice as much as equity being invested in these businesses as there was, say, 10 years ago. If you look at the nature of the businesses, this is not about going in and asset stripping. This is about buying long-term structural growth businesses where the EBITDA will continue to grow through things like you know, technology, healthcare, et cetera. So at the investee company level, yeah, the gearing is nothing like what it was uh, in, in the past. If you then look at the funds, because you've got two types of private equity, you've got a company like Oakley, which invests directly into the, the companies, and then ICGT and Pantheon yeah, are fund of funds, so they're buying into the funds. Yeah, you can look at the, the level of gearing in the funds. And then you look at the level of gearing in the actual you know, the company you're buying. So the amount of gearing in ICGT or, or in Pantheon. All the companies I mentioned are cash rich. Yeah, they have net cash, which is why yeah, if Hargreaves Lansdowne is saying gearing is over 100%, it's just plain wrong. They look at something which is... Um, I, thought, I thought you might say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's just factually wrong. Um, what they may be looking at is something where... These companies are long-term businesses, so they invest for many, many years, and they make commitments which typically will be spread out over the next four or five years. Now, if you take the total commitments over the next five years, those do exceed current cash and, in some cases, the, the, the credit lines which, which these companies have. But that's a bit like looking like BP and saying its gearing is the debt plus all of its capex for the next five years and totally ignoring any profit it will make. 
yeah, the reality is that commitments will only be drawn if economic conditions are reasonably robust. And in robust economic conditions, you're getting realizations. So you're getting cash in as well as cash out. Now, if, yeah. I, if, I, if I could stop you there, do you think that the sector has learned from previous downturns and, and deliberately built into their investment some defensive qualities into, into their investment DNA by choosing the companies and sectors they buy into? Have they learned from the past? Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, this time around, what we saw as soon as the COVID crisis hit, they started to draw down on credit lines so they had surplus cash on the balance sheet. That was an immediate response to a crisis. Uh, they did all sorts of stress testing scenarios immediately. Yeah, so most of them are reporting 80, 90% of the companies are either unaffected or actually gain from what we've seen in the crisis. And when we're saying about the DNA and the type of investments, yeah, a lot of this is in technology and perhaps more importantly, it's in tech enabled businesses. So you, know, you might have a price comparison website. Yeah, theoretically that's classified as a consumer business, but in reality, what we've seen in COVID is much more business going that way. And it sort of comes back to the core. Yeah, if you've got a, yeah, an average investment horizon of four and a half to five years, I mean, Pantheon's 5.1 years. Yeah, you have to look through the cycle. If you're looking to raise more money, yeah, you have to say not only what's happening on your current funds, but what's going to be happening in the future. So you have to look through that. So it's absolutely embedded. And if I look at somebody like ICGT, its whole culture is around defensive growth. When you look at its report and accounts, it's all about defensive growth. It's a business which is managed by yeah, ICG, which is yeah, a, a debt business where you have to focus on the downside. So very long answer when you should have kept it very short to say, yes, it's in the DNA. And why do you think investors should hold private equity stocks like these in a portfolio? Fundamentally, these are long-term assets that deliver superior long-term returns because of the business model. It isn't an accident. It's the business model which adds value that creates the superior returns which ultimately is what you're looking for a long-term holding. And uh, what's your definition of a long-term hold? How long should we, should we hold these to realise some, uh, some nice gains? I mean, I'm talking purely personally, and from my own perspective, I, I think minimum of five years. Yeah, it's the type of thing which you put into your SIP. It's the type of thing if you were you're building a college fund for the children. It's not the type of thing if you want to use it, have, have access to the cash in the next year or two years, but certainly on the five years and beyond, definitely. Fantastic. Mark Thomas, that was very educational. I, I learned a lot. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you, Donald. Uh, meanwhile, thank you for watching and do stay safe, everyone. <laughs>